Hi guys, today is the first Monday. Can you believe it is already March 1st? Oh my gosh. We've just flown, this year has just flown by. I, I just can't even wrap my mind around it. Okay, so today is Craft Your Stash and this has been in my stash for a while. Okay, so I got this clock um, from one of my favorite thrift stores and it was $3.49 and I just liked it because it reminded me of shabby chic, kind of romantic, and I'm going to upcycle it. All right, so um, basically I am taking the clock apart. Um, I'm using this. This is a transfer scraper from Redesigned by Prima. Um, and I've used it for everything but transfers. <laughs> so now I'm using my Cricut tool to pry the face, the clock face out of the clock housing. And then I'm removing the glass. So the glass was pretty much falling out. Um, it was not in the clips at all, even though it had hot glue all over it. Anyway, this clock was kind of just a hot mess. I think it turns out gorgeous, and I hope you like it. So let's get started. Okay, so um, I am actually going to be using some of my supplies, if you can believe it. I do have some IOD molds that I have never even opened, and this is one of them. This is a trimmings mold. I think it's trimmings two, if I am remembering correctly. And um, I am using some baking soda, which honestly, you don't need this much baking soda. A little tiny pinch goes a long way because then I had a problem getting my clay to stay in there. Anyway, um, so you want to work your clay. Now, this clay has been opened. The one package has been opened and it was kind of dry. I should have worked it just a little bit more. Um, it works better if you like knead it together, roll it in a ball, um, roll it out like a worm and then push it in your mold and don't overfill it. So I'm just putting it in the mold, spreading it out, trying not to overfill it. Um, and I should have worked it just a little bit more to heat it up because it was cold. It's been cold here. It went from 80 degrees to 16 degrees. And anyway, I think the whole country is experiencing menopause with this weather. It's just been insane. So I am just filling it in, making sure that I have enough um, paper clay. And I like to use the paper clay. It is a little bit drier, but it's so easy to work with. And there I go using my little scraper tool for anything but transfers. And it works really well, honestly, <laughs> for all of this. But anyway, and I love the little micro edge that these IOD molds have. I've never used them before. This is my first time. So I was really excited because I was like, this is so easy. I love it. I had absolutely no issues with this except for I just did not work my clay enough before um, putting it in the molds. But other than that, it was super easy. And I tried to use this different glue. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but anyway, I like the glue. It's great for fabric and crafting. It's just a different craft glue. Um, but I think on the mold, I like the wood glue better. So the tight bond. And I do have tight bond glue in my glue dispenser, um, which you'll see that I move on to the tight bond fairly quickly because I realize that this glue is not going to cut it. I actually end up having to add some super glue. I get some super glue gel from uh, Dollar Tree and I add that after like the next day I I go ahead and um, let it sit overnight to make sure that the clay molds dry completely. And there you go. There's my wood glue. And I do have the tight bond glue in there. And that works amazing. So I had no issues. Everything stayed in place. I didn't even have to tape it. It literally set up within a few minutes. I've been wanting to try these molds out because I have 
some projects that I've been wanting to do since Christmas. And I want to make them like kind of anthropology type um, for my grandbabies and for my best friend's grandbaby. And um, so I'm glad I actually got the molds out to try it out. So that's what I'm going to be tackling this weekend. So you'll probably be seeing those in my next video. So anyway, you're going to want to see my next video because it's going to be amazing. I'm going to be upcycling some baby furniture and just some different things. And I'm going to do it in an anthropology style. All right. So I added more, um, whatever that's called. <laughs> I lost it. Baking soda. No, is it baking soda? No. Uh, cornstarch. I added more cornstarch and I didn't need to do that because now my clay really did not want to even go down in the molds. So um, very little cornstarch is needed. And honestly, I started using my molds without the cornstarch and it worked absolutely just fine. Um, now, I guess it depends on what kind of clay you use, whether it's going to stick or not. But this paper clay is pretty dry clay, so it's not real wet. Um, so very little cornstarch is needed. I would just recommend, you know, kneading it just a little bit more so that it's more pliable um, when putting it in the molds. And then I just use my thumbs and I rub it across the little micro edge like that and then um, take all the extra off and add it to the end and it works perfectly fine. I actually really enjoy doing this. So I can't wait to make more. So I'm excited for this weekend because I'll have time to make more and let it sit up and uh, I'm excited. So I don't know why I've let these molds just sit in my drawer. Guys, I'm really trying to come out of my shell this year and use up my supplies and use some of the things that I've purchased because I've been hoarding my supplies. I don't know why. I love them so much that I don't want to use them because I don't know, I might need them for something special. <laughs> what that is, I have no idea. But, but um, anyway, I do, I hoard my supplies. Um, I have several IOD molds. I have several IOD stamps. I have brand new IOD transfer sets and I've never used any of them. So I'm going to start using them and I watch everybody else use them on their videos and I'm like, oh, I should try that. And then I'm like, no, I don't want to open the package. <laughs> They're so expensive. I feel like that I just don't want to <laughs> use them up because um, I might need them for something. What that is, I have no idea. But anyway, so I'm just kind of piecing this together since that one side was, it didn't need a full piece. So I tried to piece the mold together. Um, I wasn't sure the best way to do that. So I just kind of cut it straight and I thought, you know what, that's okay. I'm going to use another IOD mold and I'm going to make some of these little butterflies. So I add butterflies to the outside of this on the mold where the um, trimmings pieces just come together because you can still see the lines. Like you can, even though they, the trimmings mold is made to connect, um, one end is rounded, concaved, and the other one is, well, I don't know what the opposite of concaved is. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, gosh, words are hard today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank goodness it's Friday. I'm having a day. Um, anyway, they hook together so you can make them seamless, but you can still see the seams. So I am just making some little butterflies to kind of masquerade that or not masquerade so I can disguise. <laughs> Ladies, when you hit menopause, words, words are going to fail you every single day. You're going to come up with the craziest words ever. Um, anyway, so it's going to disguise where the 
trimmings come together. So there you go. All right. So now I am using the Carriage House Fusion Paint, which I absolutely love. This is one of my favorite colors for spring. Um, between this and the Moss Waverly Chalk Paint, I'm just in love with these two colors. Okay. Um, and I am giving this one good coat. Now I did go out and splurge and buy one of these perfectionist brushes. Um, it's a DIY brush and you can see that I bought a few more DIY items there. I can't remember if I got them from Lori over at Milton's Daughter or Sherry from Accidental Art Maker or Sharon, I guess, Sharon from Accidental Art Maker. But those are the two ladies that I purchase supplies from. I purchased my IOD stamps, um, transfers, my DIY paint, um, brushes, stuff like that. And um, anyway, and transfer paper, because some of, one of them carries the Roy cycle and the other one does not. So um, that's where I purchase my products. I will have the links to their websites down below in my description box if you want to go over and check them out. It is not an affiliate link. I am not affiliated with them, but that's where I buy my products. And Sharon and Lori are both very gracious and amazing and you can email them and they will help you. And anyway, they're, they're just amazing. And I love those ladies. So that's where I buy my products from. Um, if I'm buying something other than fusion and I also give the face of the clock the same color because I don't want what I'm about to do to show through. Um, I don't want the hands or not the hands, but the, the design on the clock to show through this fabric. Now this fabric is from Dollar Tree. It is beautiful and I absolutely love it. And I don't know why I only picked up one roll of it, but I had it in my stash and I found it and I'm like, oh my God, that is absolutely gorgeous. I'm using that for spring. It's perfect. Now here's my Mod Podge. It's got little strings in it, <laughs> like little dried up Mod Podge in there, even though I keep the cap on. Um, but anyway, so I just gave it a good coat of the carriage house, just one coat, and it covered up the design. And then I gave it a good coat of Mod Podge underneath. I make sure that I get the edges covered really well, and I cover it with that beautiful fabric from Dollar Tree. And now I'm going to use this white wax from Waverly, and I haven't used it in a while, and I'm like thinking, I got to use this up so I can get to my other white wax, right? Because I want to use up the supplies that are open. Um, before I open up anything new. At least that's my reasoning for using it. And then I started to use it and I'm like, oh, well, that's why I don't ever use it because I forgot it's got a yellow tint to it. So I wasn't thrilled with how this looked and I was kind of upset, but I'm like, well, I already started. So let's just keep going. And I think that the fabric, it has kind of a, an off-white background um and I think it'll go okay and it does it looks it looks okay I wished it was more white um but it gave it the same effect and it got done in the little grooves of the of the trimmings mold and the butterflies and it brought out everything that it needed to accent and bring out and then um I don't know what this little thing was up on top of this but this has got to go. So I couldn't figure out, like when I bought it, they were all pushed up. And then when I painted it, I realized that they moved, these little petals moved. And then I was like, no, it's not working for me. Um, I tore them off and I loved it so much better. I'm like, there we go, finally. Um, and it was kind of rusted there, which I don't know why, but um, I don't care. I loved it even more. So I took the little finial off and, and then I started to um, tear off those little petals. I got my little wire cutters there, filled it or covered it with some white wax, put the finial back on, good to go. And you could still see a little bit of rust up there, but that's okay. I didn't care. So now here I am, I'm getting out my super glue gel. Um, because after I put the white wax on, I could tell that some of the trimmings, the mold moldings was loose at the top. And so I just stuck my little super glue thing under there and put some glue, held it in place a little bit, and it stuck down perfectly fine. Everything else that I used wood glue on was stuck 
perfectly. So wood glue it is, guys. Now I'm just cutting this fabric around the wood round as close as I can get it. And then I am going to put the clock mechanism back together. I'm trying to figure out how this goes in there because I need to figure out how to set the clock back on there. So um, I want to make the opening of the fabric just a little bit bigger. So I use my X-Acto knife just to kind of cut around the hole that was already there. And then I put the clock mechanism back in. And then I decided to clean up the back because there's all this dried glue on there. So I get all that off of there. And then that little, it's like a little rubber piece that held the clock mechanism in place. So I used some more of that super glue gel because I didn't want to wait for my glue gun to heat up because I'm impatient. I'm a messy and impatient crafter. <laughs> And then I just put my clock mechanism back together. And guys, it works perfectly. Oh my gosh. It works absolutely perfectly. And I love how this turns out. It is gorgeous. Wait till you see the pictures. I can't believe that I remembered how, how this went back together. But I tried to lay it out in order <laughs> so that I could figure out, you know, does it go back together this way? So I wouldn't have to try to remember it. Now it's time to clean the glass and put it back together. So there are little metal clips in there. And this glass was falling out when I bought it. And I think that's why nobody was uh, buying it. Because they couldn't see the vision. But I just put the glass back in there. Put the little metal clips down where they're supposed to be. They had hot glue all over the place inside of there. Cleaned the glass on the inside because I'll clean the glass on the outside again. And then um, it's time to put the back in. Now this was kind of a booger. I'm not going to lie. I had to sand the sides down a little bit. It was a tight fit. I struggled with this for a little while. But then once it got like it automatically, well, it didn't automatically, but I don't know what I did, but then it just kind of clicked into place. And I was like, okay, well, there you go. So now I'm just putting the tiny little screws back in, which I'm shocked I didn't lose those. Um, and I put it back together. And there it is. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That fabric from Dollar Tree is absolutely gorgeous. I, I cannot believe I didn't get a couple more. Maybe they only had one. I don't know, but I love it. Absolutely love it. And then I added a little clock on the side just to hang from it. And guys, today is Craft Your Stash hosted by Lisa from Our Gray House and myself, Tammy, from The Rusted Willow. I will have the links to our YouTube channels and the playlist listed down below in my description box. So you can go over and see all the amazing crafters that join us this month. And don't forget to go by and say hi to Lisa and let her know that Tammy sent you. And we are crafting our stash this month. So, you know, I've been doing that for a few videos now, trying to get my desk cleaned off. And this is just another something, something that was laying on my desk and I painted it black for Halloween and you see how far that got. So now I'm painting it green for Easter or spring. And I am adding these transfers that I got off of Amazon. Now these are in my Amazon store and um, they go on perfectly. I think these are redesigned by Prima, um, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm using a little craft stick that came with them. And I'm just transferring them on there. And they go on perfectly fine. Now, when I'm doing my transfers, I like to like hold up the edge and then check it and then pull it back a little bit. So I always have like a finger under the little carrier sheet. And then 
I'm just checking it as I go. So you don't want to like over rub it. And then I take the backing, the carrier sheet, and I just rub it on there and burnish it down onto the uh, pail. So now these little, I don't know what you call them, but the birdhouse and the truck, um, I got those at Michael's, oh gosh, probably two years ago, 90% off. I don't even, maybe I paid 10, 20 cents for them. I don't know. Anyway, they're regularly six bucks, but um, yeah, I got them like 90% off. They were super cheap and I thought they were cute and they weren't tore up. And so I got them. So I am just adding them to this um, pail. And now the greenery inside the pail is actually uh, from Ikea. And it's just a eucalyptus little pot. And I just love it. I think it's so pretty. And then I added just a little bow. So I made that little bow out of drop cloth. Now, guys, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're new here, if you would please consider subscribing and hit that little bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. All right. So let's get on to the next one. So this last DIY, I have a uh, wood cut out from Woodpeckers Crafts. Uh, Renee over at Woodpeckers sends us these wood cutouts. And guys, the quality of these wood cutouts are just amazing. Um, I've had this in my stash for quite a while. Um, I think this is from last summer, maybe. I'm honestly not sure. Um, anyway. So I wanted to make sure that I get some of these used up. Everything that I'm using today has been in my stash for a very long time. So I'm trying my hardest to use up the stash. Okay, so I'm using my little Hippo heat press and I am pressing out the material because I don't want any wrinkles. And sometimes if you go ahead and put it on your project with wrinkles, it will smooth out. But sometimes there's those really hard creases that will not smooth out. So I want to make sure that I am taking care of those, especially because I don't want them in my crafts. And I am very picky when I craft. And so I want to make sure that um, it's good to go. Like if I wouldn't put it in my home, I wouldn't want you to put it in your home. So um, yeah, I'm kind of perfectionist when I craft. So I am taking this Mod Podge and I'm spreading it all over this wood cutout. I love this little teapot. It is so stinking cute. And this material is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I think I only grabbed one. I mean, I don't even know how long it's been in my stash. But um, anyway, I love it. I saw it. And I'm like, oh, let's use that. That's so pretty. Now I know why I picked it up, but why I only picked up one roll, I have no idea. Maybe they only had one. I don't know. So I just make sure that I get Mod Podge all around the edges really, really well. And then I do go over it with my little mini heat press here and just smooth it out just to make sure that it's nice and adhered. And then I take some more Mod Podge and I go over the top of the teapot and then I make sure that I get, get it towards the edges and that the edges are all adhered down really well. I know this video is a little bit longer. If you've been with me this long, please put a little rose down in the comment section. That helps me know if you guys are still watching, if you're still interested, or if you've just moved on. All right, so I am using this sanding block and I am sanding the material. You can sand the material. It takes a little bit more elbow grease. Um, if you have a really sharp X-Acto knife, you can use that too, or you can use some tiny little scissors to cut around the wood cutout. I found that the sanding block worked best for me. And then inside the handle, I actually used an emery board, an emery board that I got from Timu. So now I'm using this transfer. I believe it's a folk art transfer that I got from Walmart. Um, I was going to use these words, but then I realized you can't even see them. So we're going to go with this other word. Um, 
I don't know what it says, but um, it's kind of French. And I feel like the fabric and the teapot and the French word makes it kind of shabby chic. And I always start in the middle when I am burnishing down these transfers and um, work my way out. Now I'm trying to use this little transfer stick um, because I thought it would be easier to use, but I just couldn't get the feel of how to hold it. <laughs> so it just wasn't comfortable for me. So I went back to the wooden stick and then um, I'm going to put on this butterfly and I just love it. This turns out so beautiful. So let me know what you guys think. Now, I just ripped up some drop cloth and I used it as a hanger. And as you can see, I always like pull up the corner as I go when I'm transferring my uh, transfers down, my designs down. And that just helps me. Um, that way I know when it's releasing and I don't have to keep rubbing. And then I'm using this big top to seal it in because when you use a transfer, you should always seal it. So you don't want it to be rubbing off. And then I go back over my little pail and I seal that as well because you don't want anything to happen to it. And you want to make sure that it is good to go for your customers if you're selling it. And then I also go over my clocks with the big, or I went over my clock with the big top um, because I want it to be good and ready to go. Um, but anyway, somebody had made a comment that they never see me seal anything. So I wanted to make sure that you guys know that I do seal my projects um, because I want to make sure that they are beautiful for the next person. All right, guys, like I said, today was Craft Your Stash. It's first Friday. Lisa and I host this every other month and I will have the playlist link down below in my description box as well as in my comments. So make sure to go over and visit that playlist. And here is the final reveal. I am so excited how these projects turned out. They are so beautiful and I just cannot get enough of that fabric from Dollar Tree. It is gorgeous. I love this little pail with the Ikea eucalyptus plant and those little, I don't know what you call them, <laughs> little plant stakes, I guess. Um, one's a little truck with flowers and little birdhouse. I love this clock. I also added a little clock as a little embellishment on the side. And guys, I want to thank you so much for stopping by today and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye.